Hello there and thank you so much for clicking on my review of the all new 2023 BMW i4 eDrive 40 electric sports sedan. BMW has been working very hard on their new EV line and the goal is to have 50% of their fleet be fully electric by 2030. The i4 is definitely an exciting sports car for sure. The gas and diesel powered BMW 3 Series are on their way to electrification, the i4 is the first step to get there. The i4 shares many design elements of the current 3 Series, however the outer body shell is actually that of the 4 Series Grand Coupe Sports Sedan. The i4 is sold in three variants, the eDrive 35 followed by the eDrive 40 and finally M50 which is the highest performance variant of the i4. The eDrive 35 has 235 horsepower, is the most affordable, and shares a rear wheel drive only powertrain like the eDrive 40. 0 to 60 times are under 6 seconds. If you want BMW M performance, the M50 has a whopping 536 horsepower and you can sprint from 0 to 60 in comfortably under 4 seconds. Some other quick facts are the i4's 84 kilowatt hour battery provides a real world range of around 480 kilometers or just under 300 miles. The i4 supports up to 205 kilowatt level 3 charging which can take an i4's battery from 10 to 80% in just 31 minutes. I had the pleasure of taking the i4 from Vancouver all the way to Banff National Park through the Rocky Mountains to test its performance through windy mountain roads. All I can say is the i4 did not disappoint, the i4 is proof that as long as BMW keeps translating what makes them great into electric car world, I'm confident that BMW cars will maintain their edge well into the future. So without further ado, let's get this review on the road. I'll be going over the i4's exterior, interior and performance and handling before concluding with my final opinions on this excellent all electric sports car. BMW's marketed their cars as the ultimate driving machines but have always been wary of that kind of marketing. For example, Nissan TV commercials similarly claim that a stock Sentra is ready to hit the track. Spoiler alert, it's not. However, the i4 is the real deal on the tarmac and there are some technical reasons for why. For one, the BMW engineers were able to build the i4 chassis to have a 45-55 weight distribution. If you move up to the M50, the engineers were able to create a near balanced 48-52 weight distribution. If you've ever driven on a racetrack, weight distribution makes a huge difference when you try to brake into, apex and later exit turns. Cars that are balanced are much more predictable in the corners and they handle much more gracefully. The i4 comes in at a whopping 4,700 pounds, so weight balance is crucial. Now it goes without saying that electric vehicles don't have gas engines under the hood. Some manufacturers use that free space up front to provide watertight storage areas. One example is with Ford and their Mach-E line. Unfortunately, BMW just covered the hood area with plastic cladding, so not only can you not use the storage area, the whole front of the car is basically inaccessible under the hood. The electric motors are in the axles. If you own the eDrive 40, there's only one single motor in the rear axle making the car rear wheel drive. However, the M50 is all wheel drive and you get motors in both the front and rear axles. BMW claims that they designed the motor, control unit and transmission to be together in one compact package for maximum performance. While the i4's rear air suspension is a standard feature which is amazing if you the car from dipping under load, if you move up to the M50 you also get BMW M dampeners for improved on-road performance. The i4 employs the McPherson strut front suspension and multi-link independent rear suspension. When it comes to charging, the BMW i4 supports up to 205 kilowatt level 3 charging which can get you from 10 to 80% in just 31 minutes. Expect rear wheel range to come in around 480 kilometers or just under 300 miles. I drove the i4 from Vancouver to Bath and at no time was I ever worried that it ran out of electricity. The rear wheel range is excellent. BMW claims that they designed heating and cooling systems into the powertrain to improve cold weather performance and charging. Unfortunately, I just wasn't able to test these systems, it just doesn't get cold enough where I live in Canada. So now that we've looked at the exterior and some of the design features, let's jump inside and take a look at the interior of the BMW i4. The BMW i4 has a lot of cool things inside. The first thing I noticed is a large 14.9 inch curved touchscreen display that's home to the infotainment system. If you choose the premium enhanced trim package, sound will be provided by a Harman Kardon surround sound system. The digital cockpit is also included in premium package which entails a 12.3 inch digital instrument cluster. You can control the gauge cluster from the steering wheel buttons and you can access vehicle information like the speedometer and the map as well as some vehicle settings. 
The infotainment system can be controlled through either the touchscreen or alternatively the buttons and knobs on the console. You can select your media, phone, navigation, and you can control the infotainment system through the console buttons. You can even spell out letters on the touchpad if you want to input an address into the navigation system. Drive modes are also accessible to the system as well if you want to select either the sport, comfort, or eco modes. Most of the cars control the infotainment system. For example, there are no buttons to change the climate control or activate the heated seats. It's all done through the touchscreen. There's so much tech available in the i4 that I feel like I could have done a video alone just going over the infotainment system. You can play with countless vehicle settings whether you want to change the cabin room lighting or the charging schedule at night. Last but certainly not least, a 360 camera surround system with a virtual bird's eye view is available in the i4 with a premium enhanced package. The i4 can even parallel or perpendicular park itself using the onboard cameras and sensors which is super cool. Now when it comes to the rest of the cabin, I'll say I'm a huge fan of the BMW black leather seats. They felt really premium but more importantly they felt really well designed in the sense that they hug my back and legs superbly well. They were supportive of an excellent bolstering which made dynamic driving a lot easier. The same can be said for the back seats as well. I had a few passengers back there and they had no troubles in the rear. The trunk has quite a lot of room for a sports car and the seats fold down fully flat which is really nice. Believe it or not there's actually enough room to sleep in the back which is something that actually surprised me completely. I was really able to fill the sports car full of stuff and with the seats folded down there's far more room than I would have anticipated. I was able to throw half a dozen suitcases in the back on top of clothing and traveling supplies which is very impressive indeed. Now the only criticism I had for the i4 was some of the interior. Unfortunately for such a high end and otherwise flawless vehicle, some of the fixtures did not feel as high end as I would have liked. For example, all the panels are hard plastic, and to be completely honest, some of the buttons and fixtures felt somewhat flimsy with cheaper feeling plastics. This was an unfortunate detractor on an otherwise utterly superbly designed vehicle. So now that I got the interior away, let's jump into the best part, the handling and performance. All I will say to start off is that even though the i4 tips and scales to 4700 pounds, the sports car is as nimble fun to drive as anything you can imagine. I really put the i4 through its paces taking the Trans Canada Highway from Vancouver through Kelowna and eventually Banff National Park. This road cuts right through the stunning Rocky Mountains and makes for some superb driving and more importantly testing. BMWs are made in Europe and if you want to get as close as you can to Swiss Alpine roads, the Rocky Mountains are your best bet. Right away, the BMW i4 center of gravity feels so low that around corners and tight bends, the car remains super flat. It also feels very sticky against the pavement, even though the i4 eDrive 40 is rear wheel drive, the traction feels excellent. I had no idea that the i4 weighed nearly 5,000 pounds. It drives much like the far lighter gas force season, which is an incredible feat of engineering. I'm sure the standard rear air suspension and BMW performance tuning definitely made a difference. When you flick in the corners, there's no hesitancy and the suspension and chassis feel super sharp. Sometimes on heavier vehicles, it takes a second for the vehicle to begin to turn and inputs almost feel slightly delayed. The i4 doesn't have that at all. The steering is also utterly superb and super precise. There's also some good road feel so you can just feel where your wheels are pointing without even looking. BMWs are known to have a bit of oversteer, I like it that way since this is a rear wheel drive vehicle. On the power side, the i4 can do 0 to 60 under 6 seconds. While this may not seem super quick, I can assure you that the i4 pulls very hard thanks to its single electric motor. You just press the gas and you're gone. I really enjoyed driving the i4 for many hours and even with highway driving, the suspension still ate a ton of road jitters while keeping the car super nimble. Overall, I just cannot say enough good things about the i4. I really hope you have the opportunity to drive yourself. Huge kudos to BMW for creating a 4700 pound vehicle that drives a handles like one that weighs half its weight. So now that we're at the end of the review, I can happily say that the BMW i4 is an excellent sports sedan. I was always curious how BMW would convert the beloved 3 and 4 series into electric vehicles. Well, the i4 is that answer. If you tie in its absolutely stunning auto performance and handling, I can really recommend the i4 for the market. BMW throws in a lot of tech and standard features such as a 14.9 inch curved infotainment system and rear air suspension. The only con is some of the interior build quality which is only let down. I hope you enjoyed this review and thanks again so much for watching. If you liked the video, please leave a like or a sub. 
And last but certainly not least, I'd like to thank Jean-Francois Taylor and Kate Torgenrud from BMW Canada for helping me set up this review. 